Hello, and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Medical Update Online. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Quelan Connolly about an interesting study concerning patients with rheumatoid and musculoskeletal disease who received COVID-19 vaccinations. Dr. Connolly, could you start by introducing yourself? Uh, I'm Quelan Connolly. I'm a second year rheumatology fellow here at the Division of Rheumatology at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland. You are the first author on the report of a study concerned with disease flare and reactogenicity in patients with rheumatoid and musculoskeletal disease who received COVID-19 vaccination. Could you tell us what was the study and can you tell us a little bit about the thinking behind it? This study is part of a larger study designed by Dori Segev and the ERGOT transplant group here at Hopkins, evaluating the safety and efficacy of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines in immunosuppressed patients. Unfortunately, patients with rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases were not well represented in the vaccine trials. And in fact, being on immunosuppression was an exclusion criteria. So very little was known. So we wanted to fill that data gap and get information on the safety of the vaccines in our patients. And we looked at rates of local and systemic reactions, as well as the impact of the vaccines on patients underlying rheumatic disease. Mm. Mm. Let's get into the detail of the study. How were the patients for this study selected? So this uh, study was rolled out about 12 months ago, so it was right in the, in the midst of the pandemic. And patients were actually in, invited to enroll online, and we advocated for enrollment through rheumatology uh, patient advocacy groups or through the Johns Hopkins Rheumatology Centres. So any patient uh, with a diagnosis of rheumatic or musculoskeletal disease was uh, eligible. And that seemed to work fairly well. We were pretty overwhelmed by the, the um, enrollment. Uh, you know, patients really wanted to help um, and you know, get information for themselves and for other patients in similar situations. What data were collected and how was this done? So all the data was patient reported. Um, patients completed a total of three questionnaires. One questionnaire was completed seven days after the first vaccine dose. The second questionnaire was completed one week after the second vaccine dose. And then they completed a separate flare questionnaire one month after uh, completion of the two dose vaccination series. Mm -hmm. And what did you find? The most frequently reported local reaction was injection site pain. And the most frequently reported systemic reaction was fatigue. You know, these reactions were typically mild and did not interfere with activities of daily living, which was very reassuring. And similar to the general population, we found that the rates of overall reactions increased after dose two. Um, but as I said, that's very similar to the experience in the general population. Hmm. And what about disease flares? What we did find was that flare of um, overall, the rates of flare were quite low, which was very reassuring. Um, And when patients did report flare, the flares were typically mild and no patient required admission to the hospital or use of IV therapy for treatment. What we did find is that flare of their underlying disease was more common if patients reported prior COVID-19 infection, which may suggest that there was some sort of immunological priming. And we also found that patients who had reported flare of their underlying disease in the six months preceding vaccination were more likely to flare after the vaccine. And really, we think that this is a surrogate for for patients having poorer baseline disease control um, so that's that's our rationale there. Mm, that's very interesting. 